We've been talking about money, we've been talking about how to make money, but before you make money, you've got to kick ass yourselves, am I right? So how do you figure out how to trigger your magic drive? It starts with totally knowing what is the extreme focus going to come from for you. Here's my personal story. When I left university in New Zealand, back with the sheep, I desperately wanted to work for Virgin, and it meant I had to move from LA to New York. I show up on my first day of work, I walk up to the reception desk and I said, hi, I'm Sarah, I'm the new advertising executive. Amy, the CMO, hired me and she says, oh, well, that's too bad, she left the company two days ago. So I had two options. I could have just sort of stayed in my desk in the corner and hoped that no one fired me and just you know, waited for things to sort themselves out. Or I could get out of line. And I basically wrote an entire marketing plan and organizational structure, it was like 30 pages long, come into work on the Monday and I slip it under the president's door. And it could have gone badly, but actually he ended up calling me into his office and I got a promotion. Like I literally got promoted to lead the whole marketing team based off the back of my plan. And the interesting lesson that I want you guys to take away from this is when you put more of yourself on the line, you will push so much harder to succeed. I joined Virgin Mega Stores at the time when Napster had just been created. Do you guys remember Napster, free music? So when you're in a business that's selling round things with music on them and some kids are giving it away for free, not a good environment. <laughs> and I was so full of myself because I had been like crushing it at the airline that I was that person who was the rabble rouser. We've all had one, right? And what happened? I got my ass fired. Big, bad, embarrassingly, beautifully fired. This is a picture of Bodie Miller, who's the greatest American skier of all time, and he is my favorite person that talks about failure because the way he became the best skier is he decided if I learn to crash more often than the other skiers, then on race day, I'll be able to go faster and get around the gates when they're all falling. That's how he became the best skier in the world. So my point is in all of this, don't be scared of failure because it is actually the greatest personal trainer that you'll have for the rest of your life. So when I joined Gatorade in 2008, the business was about a $5 billion business and then all of a sudden things started to plateau and Gatorade went from not just growing to like massively, massively declining. So my team actually was responsible for taking that old branding and, and launching what was called G. I don't know if, you, if any of you guys remember this, What's a G? We did these big Super Bowl ads and whatnot. And the thing was, we were operating in this environment where all we had to do was take share off Powerade and win it back, and that's how we were going to win. So we launched all this stuff, and it completely, epically does not work. And the thing about it is that you actually realize when you've got nothing to lose, that's when you start to play your own game. So what we'd been doing wrong was focusing on the competition, focusing on Powerade instead of going, wait, Gary created this category, it's our game to play. How do we turn it around and win on our terms? So what we started to do was say, how do we change the game? Instead of fighting with Powerade for market share to come towards our strengths. Conventional wisdom had been, we are just a beverage. We're owned by a beverage company, that's all we can do. But when you change the game, you say, actually, we're a sports fuel company. And when I mean fuel, we put stuff in people's bodies to help them perform in athletic exercise. And in our case, we suddenly realized that we could make products, not just sports drinks, but for before, during, and after exercise. And we went from having this business that was declining 20% month on month to literally totally turning the business around. And that's what a great extreme brand and business does. They don't get distracted by where the competition's going. They know what they believe in, they stick with it, and do it through the lens of my extreme point of view. It's a human vision, legacy we want to leave behind us.